The book Street Smarts by Jim Rogers is an engaging memoir where the author confides his personal struggles and aspirations with witty humor. It is also a great source of financial education and investment advice from a person who has traveled all over the world with the purpose to see and understand how the country's economies and political regimes have evolved. Jim Rogers doesn't spare his critical remarks against the financial leaders, who in his opinion hinder the market to regulate naturally and cause more harm than good with their interventions. Learn where the next great place to live will be and which country offers the best involvement opportunities at the moment from a guy who not only delivers financial commentary on TV, but walks his talks with great success. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video if you find it useful. We thank you kindly. We will also leave a link in the description below where you can listen to the audio version of the book for free. Jim Rogers started from a very humble beginning in rural Alabama. He got a thousand miles away from home to study in Yale, Connecticut, and it opened his eyes. Then, he followed his passion to see more of the world and went to study two more years in Oxford, England. He started his journey in the financial markets when he was recruited by an old investment firm for a summer internship. By the end of the summer, he knew exactly what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. He realized that on Wall Street, he would be more compensated for doing all the things he loved to do, study history, examine world events and correlations, research, travel, and explore. Enough with formal education, he was going to work on Wall Street as soon as he could. Some of his achievements worth mentioning are, he confounded Quantum Fun with George Soros, then changed paths after 10 years to pursue a more exciting way of life. He went around the world on a motorcycle, traversing six continents and more than 50 countries. He started his own international commodity index in 1998 which by 2012 had a total return four times more than the S&P. Based on his personal experience, Jim Rogers shares his opinion on a variety of topics related to economy and politics. 1. Jim's advice to graduates. Don't do an MBA. Finance is over. Study agriculture and mining instead. Over the next few decades, it will be the farmers driving the Lamborghinis, while stockbrokers will be driving taxis. Economy is all about cycles. To those who are still determined to work in finance, the study of philosophy and history are indisposable to an investor. To think differently from others is difficult. Philosophy teaches you to think and to doubt. History teaches us that what appears undisputed today will look very different tomorrow, and that history repeats itself. Two on investing. Invest in what you yourself have a wealth of knowledge about. Everybody knows a lot about something. Figure out what your real interest is and concentrate on it. You will see a major change coming in the industry long before anybody on Wall Street will, because this is your passion and this is what you are reading about all the time. You will know when it's time to buy and to sell. Once you have capitalized on your knowledge and made 10 times your money, a dangerous time comes. You think investing is an easy game and you are really smart. Don't be fooled. It's time to do anything but think about investing. Wait patiently. Wait until you see money lying over there in the corner. If you want to make a lot of money, resist diversification. If you buy 10 different stocks, the chances are some of them will be good. You are not going to go broke, but you are not going to make a lot of money either. The way to get rich is to find what's good and concentrate your resources there, but make sure you're right. There are many financial vehicles you can invest in. Jim Rogers compares two of the biggest, stocks and commodities. When evaluating if a stock is a good buy, there are hundreds of factors to understand. Employees, products, parts, suppliers, competitors, governments, balance sheets, unions. A commodity like cotton, by contrast, is pretty straightforward. All you have to know about cotton is whether there's too much or too little at the moment. That may not be so easy to figure out, but at least the question itself is simple. 
3. On School and Tenure Even though he taught five semesters at Columbia Business School in order to get an access to their gym, Jim Rogers doesn't believe there's anything useful to be gained by attending a business school. There's a lot more you can learn during an internship, doing real work. And that is how he proceeded in his classes. He treated his students as if they were his employees. They worked really hard and they appreciated it. The author views tenure as one of the main reasons why American tertiary education has become so expensive and not worth its price anymore. Even worse, it's where incompetent teachers find refuge. Excellence in teaching has never been the way to attain it. Publishing, research, and campus politics are what leads one to tenure. There's no other profession in the world where if you work for seven years, you get a lifetime guarantee of a job, and you no longer have to prove yourself. 4. The Problems America Faces Capitalism without bankruptcy is like Christianity without hell. America today has a grave problem. Too much consumption and too much debt. And the problem is addressed by borrowing more money. But when the borrowed money is again spent on consuming instead of investing, the borrowed money does little good. Jim Rogers shares his opinion that a great collapse is needed for the American economy to get on its feet. Like Sweden, where in the 1990s the government resisted bailing everyone out, and now, after a few terrible years, the country has emerged as one of the soundest economies in the world. The Japanese government, by contrast, addressed the problem by propping up the country's failing assets and extended the crisis a decade after decade. And this is the approach the U.S. has chosen to take. The author blames that on the incompetency of the people governing America in the last decades. He thinks they lack the financial knowledge and understanding of economics and chose the easy way out. Litigation makes us less competitive. In 2005, Rogers Fund BLIM became a victim of a massive fraud. Even though the management of the fraud had not done anything wrong, Beeland and Jim Rogers personally were sued many times and he was consumed by the whole thing for years. With this incident in mind, the author shares his thoughts on the litigation industry in America. This is how it works. Filing a lawsuit costs you nothing. No matter how ridiculous your claim, you risk no financial loss. Lawyers and liability suits work on contingency basis, taking a percentage of what they win or settle for. They often settle, since the defendant soon realizes that defending the suit will be far more expensive than settling it. The explosion of the litigation industry accounts for a significant part at the expense of doing business in the US. The staggering cost of liability insurance, protecting oneself from lawsuits, makes the U.S. economy less competitive. Thankfully, for now this is mainly an American phenomenon and the court systems in Europe are not so tolerant of nuanced litigation. Land of the free? Not anymore. From the domestic surveillance called Homeland Security to the Tax Compliance Act, FACTA, which makes it hard for Americans to keep foreign accounts and the double taxation that expatriates are subject to, Jim Rogers regretfully thinks that the American citizens have ceded their rights to their government. 6. China, the new great capitalist On account of all these concerns Jim Rogers shares with us, he explains why he chose Asia for a residency. He is very excited about the future of China and the opportunities it provides. Notwithstanding the problems the country faces, this will be the next great economic power. Acting on this belief, in 2007, the investor moved his whole family to Singapore so that his daughters can learn Mandarin and speak the language like natives. One hears politicians in America railing about China's communist dictatorship. In truth, China has not had a dictator since the death of Mao Zedong in 1976. The Chinese government changes automatically every five years, and no leader can serve more than two consecutive terms. To become a Chinese leader, one needs to spend 30 years working his way up through the ranks. 
being tested all along. And then the leadership is held accountable. China has changed a lot. It's not yet the Netherlands, but it's certainly opening up. The Asian way is first to open up their economy, to bring prosperity to their country, and only after that to open up their political system. And this has proven successful in cases like Japan and Singapore. The new Asian leaders are young people, educated in Europe, exposed to the outside world who come back to their countries and pour it all in. The author ends the book with a note. The winds of change are blowing. We are witnessing a great nation's decline. Throughout history, great empires have inevitably declined. Great Britain, Spain, and Portugal. And yet they are still with us. America is not going to fall off the face of the earth. But it's time for a new great economic power. People need to accept it and act accordingly so they can take advantage of the opportunities that arise in times of change. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with us in the comment section below. We appreciate your feedback. Tell us in the comments what is your favorite book. Can't get enough of reading? Find us on Facebook at facebook.com readandgrow1 and also on Twitter at twitter.com readandgrow1.